Good morning, good morning, DC fam. I just had to make a video about that wizard situation that I brought the bill and uh, this Russell Westbrook situation, bro. For us DC, um, for us Washington Wizards fans, um, the trade deadline was tough. It wasn't, it wasn't tough in fact that we lost, like, I'm a great member of the Washington Wizards. Nah, Westbrook was just only here for a year. So losing him was expected, you know what I'm saying? But the fact that I have to say, shout out to Tommy Shepard. You motherfuckers gonna realize Tommy is not earning grand fare. All right, you're gonna realize that Ted Leonsis has basically washed his hands from the Wizards um, front office decisions ever since he hired Tommy, a competent GM. When Ernie was involved, Ted was making a lot of bad decisions because one, he was listening to Ernie's word the, only, the, the, the best decisions the Wizards made the last five years were decisions that Tommy was behind. You know what I'm saying? Every decision that was good the Wizards made the last five years or so under Ernie Grunfeld Jr. was Tommy Shepard really making those moves behind the scene. Everybody knew that. Um, if it wasn't Tommy Shepard, it was the dude at Denver, Denver current G and GM, Tim Donnelly, who was basically a Wizards assistant GM under Ernie Grunfeld for about a good five, six years in DC. The dude wanted the job. The uh, Nuggets current GM, he wanted the job. But I think after we fired Ernie, he came in for an interview, he just didn't get the job. But to be honest, he probably came in there just to tell the Wizards, you better hire Todd and Shepard, but don't be stupid. You have a great dude in-house. Don't let him go like you did me. You hire that nigga. I feel like the same mistake um, Philadelphia 76ers are doing right now with, um, What's his name? Doc Rivers. I feel like the best coach in that roster on the 7 Sister staff is um, Cassell, Sam Cassell. He's their best coach on their staff, not Doc Rivers. Doc got the, all the lime life, but people still talk about the title he won in, in Boston. That team was ripe for a title. Had they not won it, he would have been the worst coach ever. They had all the veteran leadership. They had a Garnett hungry for a championship. They have everything. And then they had a long, hungry Randall, who inexplicably they traded. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, Doc Rivers is not the best coach on that Philadelphia staff. It's Sam Cassell. If they're smart, they'll fire Doc and hire Sam. The sooner they do it, the better it's going to be for them going forward before somebody go hire Sam Cassell away. It's going to happen. It's going to be another Monty Williams for them. When they had Monty on the staff, they didn't hire him. They hired Doc instead. Stupid. Okay, anyways, let me go to this Wizards thing because that's the main reason why this video is being shot up. It's the main reason why I had to make this video. I see too many idiotic comments, too many idiotic takes on the media. The media is never like anything Wizards, especially in a trade involved with a city like LA. They're going to talk shit about it. They're going to make it look like LA won this trade. In no shape or form, under no shape or form, if you play basketball or you know anything about hoops, and in DMV, we know our fucking hoops. And nobody in the country that can tell us the every niggas don't know their basketball. We know our fucking hopes, okay? We produce some of the best dogs out here in the basketball. We know our hopes. So you find a, a, a young kid in the DMV that know more about basketball than most places, old heads in most places around the country. Dudes are out here know the game. We don't just watch the game and play the game. We know the game. We know a basketball IQ. Most DMV cats who make it, they have great basketball IQ. You can't just make it out of here and be a fool. You got to know the game. But um, that Wizards trade with the Lakers, Wizards won that joint. Nigga, I would say 70 to 30, the balance of that trade. Wizards won it massively. They won it massively. First of all, what's the Westwood contract? I never thought they would be able to find a trade partner to get rid of that shit. First of all, Tommy Shepard to, to flip John Wall contract to basically what we got now, which is the Lakers 22nd pick. We'll end up trading for Aaron Holiday, a young, quick-ass point guard who, who don't mind guarding. That's always my thing with the Wizards. Get dudes that don't mind guarding. They may not be the best defender, but at least the effort is there. The hunger to, to hunker down and stop somebody has always been there in Aaron Holiday. I've seen it in him. And all of that, with the way the Holiday Brothers um, has really grown, their name has grown around the league this past half season with what Drew, uh, Drew Holiday did with the Bucks. That was a great, great trade. 
you got to have a holiday on your team nowadays. It's like amazing having a little plumbing. If you want to win, you got to have a holiday. Okay, guys? The Wizards got a holiday. They didn't get a plumbing, but they went and got a holiday. You know what I'm saying? So, but basically what I'm trying to tell you guys, the Wizards were able to flip John Wall contract for Russell Westbrook, who ended up becoming Kuzma, KCP, Contivious Coldwell Pope, someone who basically the Wizards have been after for years. Y'all niggas don't understand. The Wizards have been trying to get Coldwell Pope for years. They even wanted him coming out of Detroit, but the Lakers got him. They've always wanted Contivious Coldwell Pope, the Wizards. They've always valued his 3 and D um, freaking skill set. The Wizards have liked that for a while. They've always, they've always liked guys who can defend the perimeter. And the NBA, if you can't stop the perimeter, chances are you're going to dominate. You're going to get dominated. And like we have big men that can stop the pain either. So we were just horrible on defense for the last few years. But I'm trying to tell you guys, the Wizards team next year has a chance to be one of the best defensive team in the league. Not only now do we have Gafford for a whole fucking season, who basically turned our defense from dead last to basically in the middle of the pack, top 12 in the entire NBA, the whole second half of the year since we, uh, basically since he came into D.C. from the Bulls, Graffo made our defense, went from dead last to something that opposing teams have to really prepare for. Because it's a battle if you won't come in the paint against the Wizards on the, uh, with Graffo in there. So, guys, I'm trying to tell you, we're going to have, we have a shot to have one of the best defensive teams next year. We got Aaron Holiday and KCP, two wing defenders, outside defenders that don't mind roughing it up. They don't mind getting after dudes on defense. I love that trade. And KCP just happened to be one of Bradley Bill's best, best friends around the league. Bradley Bill don't have many best friends. You know what I'm saying? He's one of those dudes that just keep it cordial with everybody. But there's few dudes in the league Bradley Bill absolutely fuck with. And that's um, KCP is one of them. And another one, I'm hearing rumors that he's interested in coming to DC to play with Bill. And that's Spencer Dinwiddie. I've always loved Dinwiddie. And the Wizards have always loved that man. They've loved his ISO game. His ability to get bucket, his ability to really, like, be a playmaker in a way, coming off the bench. But in DC, he's gonna be playing basically starter minutes. Even if he coming off the bench, he's gonna be playing starter minutes in DC. And the Wizards need some veteran guys like that, guys who know how to play. Like in the NBA, sometimes you just come down to knowing how to play. You can have all the skills, all the the jumping, the athletic ability. You gotta know the game. You gotta know how to, because the guys who know the game, they make it look easy out there. There are times you watch freaking um, guys like Steph Curry and them play, it looks easy for them because they know the game. They might not be the most athletic dudes, but when you know the game at a supreme level, it levels the playing field even against guys who are supremely athletic. Dude. People don't realize that. That's why most you see upsets in NCAA tournament when you, with mid-majors upsetting big teams because most of the mid-major players know the game. They, they have high IQ, basketball IQ. They know the game. They may not be the highest flying jumpers or the fastest dudes with the ball, but they're going to make open shot because they're going to set perfect picks. They're going to box you out. They're going to do all the right things in the basketball game. People don't realize those are the things that win games, not the highest jumper, not the dudes who can take the the, high, the best shot, who can make the best shot. But the Bill can score 40 by himself, but he ain't going to win if guys on the wings can't stop all the dudes on the wings. You know what I'm saying? So I expect the Wizards to be a lot better. But now, Kuzma, I feel like we're starting to get too crowded on the power forward situation with Kuzma, um, Rui, and uh, Thomas Bryant. So I feel like Kuzma is the one chip who can flip. or uh, Because Rui, Rui is going to be a star. <laughs> Rui is going to be a motherfucking star. Rui Achimura is a motherfucking star. Tommy Shepard, first pick in... That, when he picked Rui, I knew we got one. I knew we got Tommy Shepard. When I when he picked Rui, that's when I knew Tommy Shepard is a real motherfucking GM. Nobody thought we would get Rui. But once Rui fell, Rui is the kind of player the Spurs always get and dominate motherfuckers. That was a Spurs player. And the Spurs really wanted Rui. We picked him right before the Spurs did that draft. So the Wizards got one. Rui is a star. He showed me something in that Philadelphia series. After the first two games where he struggled, I feel like it was his first playoff game. He wasn't used to the intensity. But the last three games in that series, the Wizards lost it 4-1. to one. The last three games, Rui dominated. Rui averaged like 19 on like 50% shooting, including like 40% shooting on three. If Rui can do that, he's a monster, bro. Rui's going to be a monster. 
because he's way stronger than people think. And we always go get way better on defense than people think. He just hasn't really hunkered down yet because he's trying to make a name for himself on the offensive side of the ball. That's what you got to do in this league. You got to make a name for yourself. Find a way to, to make a skill set that is so great that teams can't ignore. And Wooey we'll right now, he's becoming such a good offensive player that once his defense come along, man, that's a that's that's a, that's one of the top ten power forwards in the game. Future in the future in the next few years, guys, Wooey we'll is gonna be right there. And Danny Williams, Danny wrong all last year. We can't draft a kid who in, in Europe. The reason why we draft him because we like his playmaking skill, but then I give him the ball. I feel like we tried it early. Once he was making too much mistakes, uh, Scott Brooks just went away from it. And Scott Brooks has never been a coach who players would say, yeah, he do, he, do, he draw plays. His system is based on the players. He has a system in, set, is in place. That's what Scott Brooks does. He has a system in place. And if guys don't play up to his system, he usually, uh, those guys won't play long. On his, won't play along on a Scott, a Scott Brooks' coach team. It's always happened. His system is his system. Now we have a coach in there who was uh, Ansel Jr. who's going to have a system in place based on every player. That's what the good teams who are winning championship are doing out there, guys. Don't just have a system and just trying to force every player to conform into your system. No. Sometimes you got to get players with a certain skill set and then draw plays for them throughout um, the course of a play to where they can get open looks while also giving other guys involved. That's what the good coaches do. That's what the Warriors do. That's what the um, the Atlanta Hawks did this year with um, with their with their um, their coach the the. The coach who ended up taking them to deep in the playoffs. Yeah, after after they find um, Pierce, the original coach to start the year. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is, the more players you have with different skill set, they're better in the NBA. You can't have guys do the same shit all the time. You need guys doing different things, and then you got to have a coach, a staff, smart enough to have a system in place to make sure all those guys have fun on offense. Because that's the only way those guys can keep maximizing their effort on defense. If you guys giving a hundred percent effort and every time they're going down court they don't even get a look. The niggas ain't gonna play that hard all throughout the year. I guarantee you by half to the all-star break, niggas gonna stop saying fuck this team. So the Wizards gotta get to that point. KCP was a great high, great, 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 great get. I think of all those guys we got on that trade to the Lakers, that was the guy I really, really want. Contavious Correa Pope. Not only because we've lacked that wing defender for so long. Now we got him. So all this fan base laughing, Bradley Bill for staying in DC, you niggas are idiot. You know the same motherfuckers that make fun of Katie that basically, this nigga basically almost committed suicide to a point where his mama, Katie's mama had to basically come out publicly and, and go after Stephen A. Smith's head and tell him, leave my son alone, bro. Back off my kid. Stop hopping on my kid's back. He's a grown man. He made a grow his own decision. That's what we're about. We raise our kids to make their own decision. And people tear down Katie so much. Like, the nigga literally had to go make his own fake-ass page on Twitter just so he can, can just contain some of the negativity that he was getting. And he still got flack for that. So I'm trying to tell you guys, like me, I don't ever listen to most of the kids, people that come in on Twitter are middle schoolers, high schoolers. These niggas are losers. They don't have nothing. They've never played ball. Most of these kids will never go anywhere in their fucking lives. So they're just sitting there talking shit on Twitter all the time. Nigga, you stupid. The decision Bradley Bill made was, was just a financial decision. Nigga, it's a decision that financially, it's almost a $70 million decision. Why the fuck would any player, who the fuck are you to tell another man to drop $70 million on the table? Who the fuck, who raised you some of this nigga? I know sometimes that's what I think about when I watch some of the comments on Twitter. I'm like, who raised you kids, bro? Who raised some of you niggas to advise somebody else to leave a money on the table? Nigga, two things I grew up learning early. You will never talk about another man's money. You don't never talk about money, another man's money, bro. Because you don't fucking know nothing, bro. You don't talk about another man's money, man. Who the fuck is this, you niggas? You loser-ass bitch niggas. Even some of these media people. Oh, Bradley Bill just want to be unhappy in D.C. Who told you he was unhappy? The man has a whole family. A married man with a whole family in D.C. that he loves and adores. Bill trying to build something here. He want to make himself the man in D.C. Not one of the guys somewhere else. Do you know anything about that? Do some of you kids ever had an idea of what being a man is like? Being the man is like in anything in your lives? Most of you have never been the man in anything in your motherfucking lives. Not even in your bedroom. Your bitches is the man. And here you are talking about a man with a family who's making not just a financial common sense fucking decision. Even this bad, the bill just want to lose. 
the fact that he made that decision on finances should just get him credit. Nigga, who the, who the fuck would willing, willingly leave $50, 70000000 million nowadays? Why you think Damien lit it? People be talking about Damien going to request a trade all summer long. He hasn't said a damn word. Nigga, you'd be a fool to leave $70, $50 million, $50, $70 million on the deal nowadays because that's what max contract gets. That's basically what you're going to guarantee to get by the end of your career. If you leave that on the table, you're leaving $50, 70000000 million. It adds up. By the end of your career, that's that's how much less money you're going to have by leaving that mass contract. Nigga, you think them putting all those hard years for, for on Portland only to leave just when he's maxed by the kick in? You think by the way putting all this hard effort, averaging 30 points the last three, two or three seasons so he can leave a max on the table? Nigga, you niggas are dumbasses, bro. Who raised you bastard ass, bastardized niggas, bro? Like some of the shit I've been hearing, it's literally straight up insult. So I'm throwing back insult at every one of you idiots, bro. Who raised you niggas, bro? Who told you guys it's okay to advise another man money, bro? Let's talk about another man's food, how to put his food on the table, bro. Bill made a common sense decision. And not only is it a common sense decision, but it's a decision he made with the direct trust in Tommy Shepard. And it's going to pay off. People don't realize that. Giannis did the same decision. He put his trust on the box. He could have opt out and not even re-sign that, sign that max deal. But he put his trust in the Bucks and it paid off. You guys got to realize, some of y'all don't know nothing about putting trust in people, bro. You don't know nothing about putting trust in somebody. But the bitch putting the trust on the Wizards organization with a competent GM. Not just a competent GM, but one of the best GMs, fresh GMs in the league. That's so most people realize Tommy Shepard is the fucking GOAT. He's one of the best GMs in the fucking NBA. It will happen very soon after he construct this roster, this one off season, and then in the course of the next two off season, this man gonna build a championship roster in DC. Yo, watch, we just freed up almost endless money in cap room. Not just really after this year, guys, we have literally all the Bradley Bill and Rui and Danny on the books. Everybody else is off the books. The Wizards can literally go out and construct a championship roster. In one off season, you motherfuckers don't know basketball. Tommy Shepard is thinking big picture, and the, some of the moves he's make this off season, the kind of moves that even if we do end up losing Bill in free in free agency, they won't impact us in the way people think they impact us. Cause why? He's bringing in quality. In Kuzma is a young quality dude who I think can be a twenty points plus a game score in the NBA. He proved it. With the young Lakers school, the dude averaged 19. And then LeBron came. So he had to basically change his whole fucking game. It's like taking a, a, a square pig and fitting them in a rectangle box. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to take some kind of twisting and bending for that shit to work. That's what Kuzma did. He bend and twist his own game, his home freaking growth. So they can win a championship. And he did with the great, with legendary players. Nigga, I'm trying to tell you guys, not many young players will do shit like that. I feel like Kuzma is going to shine in DC. Shine. You don't got to worry about when Bill kick you the ball. Bill ain't worrying about you kicking it back to him. If you're open, shoot it. That's the whole point in Wizards. We need shooters. That's why we drafted um, the kid Corey Kispert from um, Gonzaga, who many people are talking shit about now. But I guarantee you, man. That kid is the closest thing I've seen to Kevin Hurdle, a.k.a. Um, Clay Thompson, that I've seen in the NBA draft in a long time. You're going to start realizing these white boys can play. Especially these white boys that come in with high IQ. They can develop and play. Kevin Hurdle have developed, and he's short this year playoffs. He showed out. I expect the same thing with Cole Kesper. He's going to be a lethal shooter. But most people don't realize about his game. The kid has a great basketball IQ. And dudes like that. They always get better in the NBA. If you know how to play the game, you're going to get better. You're going to know the spots you need to be to get your bucket or to be effective. Corey Kesper is a great high IQ basketball player. He's going to shine. That's another great pick. Every pick that uh, this man has made all have great basketball IQ, except for Rui. I question Rui basketball IQ sometimes only because he hasn't been long since he played the game. But the, his work ethic, and the eager to get better is why Rui got taken by the Wizards. And it's why the Wizards took him. And he and that has proven so far. The dude has gotten so much better since his rookie to second year. And next year, just based on the performance I'm seeing Rui um, this Olympics with Japan, 
his jump shot looks so much quicker. His release looks so much quicker. He's jumping a little higher on the jump shot. Like, he's look a lot more confident in the, um, playing uh, in the Olympics for Japan. Nigga, if Rui brought that kind of improvement into the season or even expand on it, man, we just, we just, we got one, man. We got one. We'll let you know we got one. This dude dunked on Anthony Davis in an ESPN televised game. When he did that, I knew he had superstar in him. You don't understand. There's many good players in this league that don't want to do facials. They're scared to, to attack the rim like that against another superstar. Who didn't just attack the rim? He tried to rip that fucking rim right into Anthony Davis' fucking face. That's what you do, bro. You young basketball players out there. You get the ball in the paint. It doesn't matter what the fuck is in there. If it's Shaq, you try to put him in the basket. Make him foul you. And then still go in and get an in one like Rui did. So I'm trying to tell you guys. But, um... Yeah, man, I just had to make this video because too many nonsense going on. I've been seeing too many shit. People talk about the Wizards as if the Wizards are bombs. they disgrace. Like, you guys think that's the old Wizards. That's the Ernie Grunfeld Wizards. You guys ain't paying attention. My fact, 99% of the people that were talking shit about the Wizards, they literally said Ernie Grunfeld is our GM. Like, how can I listen to motherfuckers who don't even know Ernie Grunfeld is not a GM in D.C. anymore? Who still think it's a, a, a fool calling the shots in D.C.? You guys ain't paying attention. Wiz, uh, Wizards be paying attention. Bradley Bill is paying attention to what the Wizards are doing. I love every move the Wizards has made so far. Every fucking move. From trading away the Lakers pick to getting Aaron Holiday. Brilliant fucking move. Okay? So now, hearing rumors that if if um, if um they can't get dealing with it uh, straight up in free agency, just outbeating the fucking Brooklyn, which everybody should be able to outbeat them niggas because they're broke, then they're just going to fucking trade for him. They just gonna trade for him, man. We got pieces now. Give him Matros Hero. And a young nigga. Let's go. But one of the dudes, Wizards, Wizards are gonna be deadly next year, bro. But yeah, like one of the dudes I would like to see the Wizards go after this offseason. Um, besides um Dean Witty, of course. And um and what's in it? We already got go with Pope. I would like us to go for go after a small forward with defensive minded. Defensive minded small forward like Grant. If we just can get Grant in DC, that would be perfect. Her, her Grant, the dude that played for Detroit last year, who, who showed great improvement in his offensive game. He's always been a good, sturdy defender, but he really showed out for the first time in his career, going to a place where he's not playing along superstars anymore. He can just be his play his game. Same thing I spell Kuz uh, to happen to Kuzma. He finally went to he's finally in, in a place in DC to where. You ain't playing along, you, other than Bradley Bill, you ain't playing along with too many superstars. And LeBron is a mega ball hogger. Nigga, this, I expect Kuzma to drop 20 a game next year. If not, damn close to with much higher shooting percentages and everything across the board. Kuzma is not a bad player. The Lakers can make young players get burned out because the pressure of always just being a supporting cast can burn young players who come in the game with great aspirations. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, another dude I would love to see the Wizards trade for is Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball, got, they got to get him out of New Orleans. He clearly, he's not a good fit in New Orleans. New Orleans is really, really not happy with him. So I feel like Wizards could trade for him. It might, they might cost us a little more than we want, but I don't mind giving a first-round pick and another uh, player like Montrez Arrow to them for uh, for um, Lonzo Ball. You know what I'm saying? And now, I don't want to hear uh, LeVar Ball out too much, but I don't give a damn. Everything LeVar Ball said came true. So the man probably might be a prophet monster than a father. You motherfucker disrespecting that nigga like he don't know what he's talking about. The nigga might be a prophet. Pretty soon, he's going to have all three of his sons in the NBA. Damn what? Huh? You all wait till LeAngelo Ball find a way, because I've seen LeAngelo Ball lately. The dude that transformed his whole body. Talk about a dude who found his dream. Some of you niggas just talk about your dreams. They don't really put in the work to follow it. The LeAngelo Ball has grown on me. You have my respect. I'm cheering him on. I hope he makes it. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, guys, had to make this video, guys. Shout out to Tommy Shepard again. Shout out to DC fam. Shout out to Brad Bill for being his own man. You know what I'm saying? So, hopefully, we can make that shit paid off for him because we needed to make it pay off. Get around more better players around him. You don't even got to be a superstar. It's just hungry guys who been playing um, on the wings of superstars who are just trying to burst out of their shadow out of that shadow. So get them dudes in there. Those are the dudes that usually lead teams to championship. Dudes who are tired of playing under, under somebody's shadow who just want to go somewhere else and be themselves as a player. So I expect that to be um, freaking Kuzma. I expect that to be freaking Aaron Holiday. 
every time I watch that dude play last year in Indiana, who played them a lot, who beat them all, uh, I think who beat them each time we played them last year. But every time I watch him play last year, I had the feeling this kid's gonna be a star in the right situation. Cause every time he messed up last year, they took him out. Their coach took him out last year. Every time he messed up, in this year, that ain't gonna happen. Cause we used to East Smith fuck ups and we still get them on the court. So, and this kid is not even close to being an East Smith type of fuck up, especially on defense. This kid is gonna ball out for us, all right? Now, he took a lot of, uh, Aaron Alley, that takes a lot of in advice, in -advice shots. Um, his shot making is very shot decision taken. It's very horrible, but that's gonna get improved on the Bradley Bill. You have to, or Wizards ain't gonna go shoot you right out of there, bro. You ain't gonna be taking more shots than Bradley Bill. I know the situation, young man. But um, I love that trade. I love the Kuz trade. I love the Montrez Harold trade. The rugged big, who basically all our young bigs are all good and hungry, but they're now rugged on defense. Montrez Harold is rugged. You need rugged guys like that. So I can't wait for the, uh, the Wizards to sh to shine, man. Like I love all the moves we made this off season. So basically now it's just about a it's just a matter of free agency. What we're gonna do against being witty gain another uh maybe a Lonzo ball or maybe a young small forward in here like um Grant who is hungry and tenacious on defense. That's what the Wizards need because the Wizards got our offense people forget we've been top two in off top three top four in offense the last three seasons. And that's even going back to without wall. So and then last year people want to make it look like we're so Bruce Maker. We had a top two offense the year before. Westbrook came to a great system. That's why he uh, he averaged the way he did. His averages were all outrageous. He came to a great system, a great fit. So everything worked out for him. And now he's at home in LA. The Wizards gave him exactly what he wanted. He wanted to be close to home. We made it happen for him. So I'm happy for him. I saw what he posted on uh, for Twitter, on, on social media. Shout out to Westbrook. He loved this. He, this, he loved them, man. We really did love Westbrook. We, we love this effort. We love his heart. We don't lose Westbrook because we'll give you everything you paid for. It'd be nice I go to games, bro. I'd be want to leave in the first quarter because of the effort I'm seeing from everybody else. But Westbrook kept me in the game, kept me sitting on my seat because I wanted to see if he can motivate everybody else to shine. And sure enough, most of those games, the Wizards came back. They might not win all of them, but they usually come back because of Westbrook. When you have one dude that just keep playing hard every time, all the guys will feel ashamed at some point. Like, we got to match that. You know what I'm saying? So... So shout out to the Wizards for the trade. Um, I, mean, I don't even remember the last time the Wizards win a trade deal. This one, we didn't just win and respect the motherfucking Lakers. I feel like we robbed them motherfuckers. They were so desperate to get Westbrook, a big name. They got one. And he's from LA. So the fans are going to be buzzing. The city going to be buzzing. So it's good for everybody all around. The Wizards came up on top. LA finally got their man. They got their big name. They got a hometown hero. Hey, man, I hope the Lakers great season, except for when they play the Wizards. And I hope the Wizards can stay healthy and get better veterans in here to help Bill. Because believe me, guys, Bill is not a fool. Thomas Shepard is not a fool. The Wizards are certainly and no longer fools. We are doing something here. We're building something. You guys just be patient for you Wizards fans and for you shit talkers, trash head, doo -doo head ass niggas out there talking shit about the Wizards. You niggas don't even watch Wizards basketball, so I don't really value what you say. But really, I just read it just to, just, just to gauge just how ignorant some of you guys are which is massively ignorant. So many of y'all really are trying to make another man tell another man what to do. You know what I'm saying? The Wizards moves were all positive for us DC fans. We loved it. If you follow basketball, you know the game, you play the game. The Wizards did all the right moves so far. Now let's see what they did the rest of the offseason. But Thomas Shepard, I have all my trust in that man. And go DC fan.